Lord be with you. Listen to the gospel of our Lord Jesus according to St. John, chapter 11, beginning to read at verse 32. Glory. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thank you. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, O Rock and Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May the triune God bless you, strengthen you, and empower you in all your works and efforts through this week. Amen. Today's scripture readings, the Old Testament reading, the epistle, and the gospel readings, all are closely related and interconnected to each other. Two themes that can be identified that run through all these three passages. One is life, and the other one is the spirit of God. So I invite you today to meditate with me upon the Spirit of God. The first truth that we can discern from these passages is the Spirit of God enables us in our hopeless situations. The Spirit of God enables us in our hopeless situations. The Old Testament passage, Ezekiel Chapter 37, verse 11 reads like this. Our bones are dried up. Our hope is lost. We are cut off 
completely. We see the prophecy of God to Ezekiel comes in a situation in a time where the people of Israel have lost their hope completely. They were in an exile period, which was longer, and their energy got dried up completely. That's where they say, we are cut off completely. They have lost their hopes entirely. They do not want to see anything ahead. They want to put an end from where they, are, they were standing. And in this situation, the word of God comes to them through prophet Ezekiel. And the spirit of God enables them in their hopeless situations. The Australian Bureau of Statistics shows data that about eight or nine people lose their lives each and every day in a situation where they themselves take down their lives. It is unfortunate and the statistics further shows it is more seen among men and among the age group of youngsters. We sympathize and empathize with them. But when we analyze, when we see, it is in their hopeless situations that they finally decide to give up their, not only the hope, but also to live for them. Here, the word of God comes to the people of Israel that God is our hope. God has given us his spirit to empower us and to strengthen us. This chapter of Ezekiel, the dried bones symbolizes the people of Israel. And God sends out his spirit into these dried bones so that they are enabled. It is most times when we are put up in a situation, when we are broken, when we lose hope because of failures, because of what we did not want that to happen, that we decide to give up. But the Spirit of God comes to us in a situation where there is an inability within. The Spirit of God was breathed into these dried bones and the Spirit of God entered into them. In Romans 8 verse 9, we read, you are in the Spirit since the Spirit of God dwells in you. So when the Spirit of God dwells within us, we are not only enabled, the inability within us is removed and transformed by this Spirit of God so that we are enabled. So at any cost, the Spirit of God does not want us to give up in our lives, does not want to give up in any situation to hold on and to hold on to the Spirit of God. The call here is, to hold tight to the Spirit of God, to depend upon God so that the Spirit of God can enable us in the toughest situations. The second truth that we can discern from these passages is the Spirit of God restores us. 37, the book of Ezekiel 37 verse 12 reads like this, therefore prophecy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Here, God decides to bring them back to their own land. Restoration. The theme restoration, the theology of restoration 
runs throughout the Old Testament, which is one of the important characteristics and very nature of God, the God, we believe in a God who restores us. And God here sends out his spirit so that the people of God be restored back to their own lively situations, to their own home. This passage of Ezekiel is a metaphoric expression. But then this becomes real, a reality, when we read the John's Gospel. It becomes history that really Jesus made a man. Jesus, Jesus restored a man named Lazarus. And what was this restoration all about? Jesus restores him to life from death. Jesus restores him to light from darkness. Jesus restores him to his village from the grave. Jesus restores him back to his family, to his home, to his own sisters, from where he was lying down alone. God's restoration assures us that we be restored back to life and we be restored back to sound relationships. When we look, on, look into these statistics, why these young men and women give up their lives, it is mostly because of failures in life. And many failures also attribute towards relationships with each other. God restores back our relationships. We are assured that we will be restored, our life will be restored back to our relationships. And the third truth that we can discern from these passages is the Spirit of God enlivens us. The Spirit of God enlivens us. Romans 8 verse 10 we read like this. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. The spirit is life. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. So God enables us, restores us, and enlivens us through the spirit and so that he keeps the spirit in us. The spirit is life and he keeps the spirit within us so that the Spirit can dwell in us. So we are called to ask God, to call out for the Spirit of God to come into our lives, to fill us, to enrich us, so that the Spirit of God can dwell within us. There was this small little girl who was standing on a beach and she was standing there. She saw many starfish there, hundreds of starfish um, being thrown away from the water onto the shores. So she picked each, each and every one, one by one. She picked one by one and let it go into the water. She was doing it carefully, slowly and carefully so that she, do, she did not want to hurt the starfish, but she wanted to ensure that she, it goes back to the waters. So when her father noticed this, he came to her and asked, darling, what are you doing? She said, dad, if these starfish would be lying on the sand, it would die. So I want them to go back to the waters so that they can live and freely swim. 
And her father said, darling, there are hundreds of starfish here. And are you going to pick one by one and going to uh, leave it into the water? You cannot do it. It will take more than a day to do, and you cannot do it alone. But the little daughter was adamant. She said, no, I want to take care of each and every one, and I will take one by one so that I will carefully give it, leave it back into the water. We are at times like the starfish in the hands of God. God do not want to give up on us. And like the starfish, the starfish, may, we do not know whether it was holding on to the hands of the little girl, but we are called to hold on to the hand of God, to the Spirit of God, so that the Spirit of God can enable us in our own inabilities, in our own hopeless situations, so that the Spirit of God can restore us back into the waters of life so that the Spirit of God can enliven us from the fear of death and from every situation. May we hold on to this Spirit of God. May the Spirit of God dwell within us, enabling us, restoring us, and enlivening us. May the triune God bless us. Amen. Shall we keep a moment of silence and ponder upon the words that we just heard?